welcome to Health Live at Seniors Today. I hope you like this video. It's a little long, but we will. We thought it would. It's you know we've been around for almost <clears throat> two years, but it will be two years in June, and uh, it's it's a good introduction. Thank you, Devendra Gada, for your comments, uh, and we are delighted to have uh, here with us, Dr. Ankur Fatarpekar. Uh, good evening, Dr. Ankur. Yeah, hi, good evening. How Hello. are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, so Dr. Ankur came in a little late because he was in the OT with, a, with an emergency case. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to pull you out from uh, your patient and this is happening just too often. Perhaps we should look at a better time to do this. <laughs> Uh, you know, no, no, no. It's my pleasure to be with you. And uh, emergencies don't uh, uh, don't give a time. That's the problem. I mean, they come. They are emergencies, right? That's right. So that's, so right. So that's the problem. I was, I was, I was wondering. I mean, whether I'd be able to join you because the procedure was getting delayed. But thankfully, I finished it in the cock time, and I'm here with you. Great. So let, let me do the introductions first. Uh, uh, we have here with us Dr. Ankur Fatarpekar who's an interventional cardiologist at the Saifi Hospital and a director at Cat, of Cat Lab at the Symbiosis Hospital. He's an alumnus of the State GS Medical College, which of course means that he was a, quite a topper in, in, in his studies. He has performed more than 300 PCI procedures as primary operator, including 50 primary angioplasties in myocardial infection. Considerable, he has considerable experience in managing chronic total occlusions and use of intravascular ultra, ultrasonography. Uh, he has attended workshops on OCT in coronary arteries under, uh, 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 under a well-known doctor. He has, he has more than 100 uh, uh, different kind of surgeries, uh, exceedingly long names, so I'm not going to be able to pronounce them. He, he has a special interest in structural performed and assisted in, in complex structural heart disease procedures like device closure of ruptured sinus of uh, Valsalva, et cetera, et cetera. He's also active in the upcoming field of oncocardiology, having experience of treating a special subset of uh, oncology, that is cancer patients with long-term cardiac issues due to chemotherapy. Welcome uh, to Health Live, Dr. Ankur. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so nice of you. I mean, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, because uh, I, I, I mean, uh, it's it's a pleasure to come and speak with the uh, senior citizens who have given so much to the society and will give, will be giving so much to the society with their experience. And I'll do my bit to share my knowledge with you, so that if if it can help you, uh, we'll be very happy. No, no, we will, we will. We've heard so much about you and uh, you know the work that you all have been doing. Um, that it's a it's a pleasure to have you uh, with 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 us. Uh, uh, you know, this is a question which I ask everybody who comes here. Uh, and since you are, you you were, were in the OT just now, you are in, in hospital gear, as I can see. Uh, uh, you know, what's the COVID situation like right now? So thankfully, the COVID situation is improving. We are not seeing many admissions. Uh, we're not seeing as many bad patients as we used to see them. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, the thing is, uh, even our routine patients for me as a cardiologist, the issues would be that patients with COVID would present with heart attacks. And that would be very common presentation, you know, for, for a cardiologist uh, seeing. So sudden, suddenly the plaques would go unstable in the heart, cholesterol blockages, and uh, they would rupture and would cause massive heart attacks in many of these patients. And uh, thankfully, we are not seeing that because COVID is on a vein right now. Uh, and the problem used to happen is when whenever the patient used to be COVID positive, the hospitals... Uh, and the cath lab staff wouldn't uh, would be you know in PPE and a lot of protocols to be followed. So a lot of uh, time delay used to happen uh, to treat these patients. So thankfully now that uh, because COVID has gone down, we're seeing less and less of patients coming with uh, with heart disease and COVID. And thankfully, I think uh, uh, it, it's on the way. And thank God. Uh, so the situation seems better now than before. But you 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 mentioned. Uh... The, the, you use a phrase on the vein, which means it's not totally eliminated. And of course, the numbers say that. Right, right. So uh, so the thing is, uh, because our vaccination rates are very good, uh, we are seeing infections, no doubt, but those infections are 
are are still not you know those serious ones but we have unfortunately many other many people who are left out uh, of the vaccination drive either willingly or unwillingly and uh, because of that what we are seeing is uh, we are seeing the unvaccinated patients coming to the uh, uh, coming to the hospital with serious infections so uh, my appeal to everyone and including all the senior citizens is to get themselves vaccinated because there is this dogma or there is this uh, this this misconception that people who have heart disease uh, should not be taking vaccines or they require a special certification for that uh, let me tell you people who have heart disease require the vaccine the most because many of them would be at increased chance of having a covid infection and also they might have comorbidities like diabetes which uh, puts them at an increased risk of having covid infections so uh, my appeal to everyone is to mask up to to take all precautions and to take vaccination and also booster now if uh, if if they have not taken it great doctor do you have a presentation or would you like to just give a uh, uh, just, just speak about the subject and then we can go ahead and take I, questions I, i think i think it would be better if you if you if the audience asks their questions their doubts and then you know the, i could so just a few opening remarks from you and then we can get on to uh, you know uh, on on what uh, uh, you know the, the the topic that we have for you is on heart uh, valve and you know other cardiac concerns special right. cardiac concerns for seniors right. so 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 could you talk to us a little about what the heart uh, valve is all about and what it means uh, to take care to ensure that um, one doesn't have a, 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 a problem regarding that right so uh, heart uh, heart basically is is nothing but a pump so what heart does is it pumps blood from uh, from the lungs the blood comes to the heart and heart acts as a pump and it uh, uh, it allows the oxygenated blood to go to all parts of your body uh and there are four walls in the heart so there are four chambers and four walls right side has two chambers every chamber has a wall beneath and the wall opens only in one direction so so the blood flows from chamber 1 to chamber 2 but doesn't come back to chamber 1 because it's like a one sided wall like like any door which would open one side or the wall of a cycle which would only open one side and wouldn't go on so what happens is from one chamber to the other chamber that the right side of the heart the deoxygenated blood or the bad blood comes goes to the lungs to get oxygenated then comes to the left side and again every, the third and the fourth chamber of the heart on the left side has its own wall now what happens is when you age as you get cataract as you get arthritis as you get you know the other degenerative diseases part of the aging the walls also undergo aging and what happens to the walls is they become thickened and calcified and many of the uh, many of our uh, patients who are especially now we are because of good medical care we are living longer so many of our patients are, are the nonagenarians the octogenarians the septagenarians they come with either wall leakage or wall stenosis that means there is obstruction to the flow outflow from the heart so these are the valvular problems uh, uh, which which we might face as we age unfortunately we don't have great medications at present at this point of time to arrest this this process though there are medications good medications for decreasing the blockages from the heart but there are still not good medications for for reversing these degenerative changes which are settled uh, in the walls of the heart so that's that's one thing which i which i want to uh, which i want to impress upon is to have a regular follow up with the cardiologist respect the symptoms of breathlessness chest pain or 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 syncope which is which is chakkar or or blackening in front of your eyes so these are the symptoms the symptoms of valvular heart disease are very similar to those of blockages and it might be difficult to differentiate so a a, a, a good consultation with a cardiologist a regular ecg and 2d echo could pick up most of the valvular issues right thank you those of you who have questions please put them in the q and a tab uh, mention your age and gender so that um, uh, so so you know dr ankur would be able to give a a, a better answer uh, all right uh, so we have a question from uh, mr bharat mehta who says after angioplasty the his doctor has given him medicine for hypertension blood thinner cholesterol lowering etc what are the side effects and how much time uh, precautions um, uh, need to be taken so uh, so he is asking about 
post angioplasty so let me let me broaden this question so let me uh, let me put the question and let me answer it myself so post angioplasty what are the things what you need to do so that you come to know that you are in a good shape and secondly so that you don't have disease further so these are two different aims these are two different issues so when a patient comes to us as a cardiologist post angioplasty asks us two questions essentially one is how i am and two is what should i do so that i don't have disease so these are two separate questions so how i am is basically we we do an ecg or 2d echo and also we make sometimes we make the patient to undergo a stress test because the baseline ecg might be normal the baseline 2d echo might be normal so you go further and put the heart under stress so these are the tools by which you come to know that how the patient is doing heart wise that's that's the first thing so how i am is by these three three or four investigations the next question is what should i do so that i don't have disease so you need to you need to keep your heart rate under control the first thing there are four targets essentially what you need to achieve post angioplasty first is keep your heart rate under control that is between 60 to 80 so when your heart rate is between 60 to 80 your heart is functioning optimally second keep your blood pressure at 130 80 unless you are 80 plus so if you are if you are having a heart disease your targets are not 140 90 your targets are 130 80 because there is data to tell you that when you bring the pressure below by 10 mm you live longer the third is your cholesterol and if you see any cholesterol report there is lot of cholesterol uh, uh, types of cholesterol the ldl the hdl the triglycerides of which the most the most deadly or the most uh, Uh, the, uh, the the cholesterol which correlates with heart disease is the LDL cholesterol, which is called as bad cholesterol. So the LDL cholesterol has to be has to be around 50 mg dL. So what people do is they do their cholesterol reports and see the reference range and say, oh, my cholesterol is within the range, so I'm okay. But mind you, those ranges are for general population. It's not for patients who have cardiac disease. In cardiac disease, we keep the LDL cholesterol way too low. that is we keep normal range would be 100 mg dl we go to 50 mg dl that's half of what it is and the lastly the fourth and the most important goal is if you are a diabetic keep your hba1c or your sugar three month sugar at around 7 so when you keep your hba1c 7 you keep your heart disease under control so heart rate between 60 to 80 bp 130 80 ldl cholesterol of 50 and your hba1c of 7 so these are the four targets when you achieve this uh you you reduce the chances of having further cardiac disease now the question was uh, uh i am taking medications and what are the side effects of medications so normally post angioplasty you you are on two thinners at least for a year unless you are a, you are a very elderly gentleman or uh, or or uh, or a lady in that case we would give thinners for 6 months depending on the bleeding risk and then switch over to a single blood thinner the problem is when you have thinners going on you should take care that you don't have a fall or a trauma because that means that you will bleed more second is you you might be on cholesterol lowering medicines that is statins etorvastatin rosuvastatin these medications are very good for the heart but they might cause side effects like uh, muscle aches and pains so severe muscle aches and pains are are found in certain individuals so if it if at all you are on you're on uh, statins or cholesterol lowering medications and you're getting muscle aches and pains you should visit your doctor to to evaluate and to get investigated great thank you doctor um, there is a question from uh, mr somesh jawa who says i'm 67 year old um, male patient of hocm i'm highly symptomatic my doctor has advised me septal myectomy i have been told that there is no center of excellence in india i had met some consultant in the us during my recent visit was told that the surgery may be carried out by a surgeon who performs 20 to 40 surgeries annually i was advised to get the surgery done in the us at uh, mayo and cleveland were the names that came up but the expenses are unaffordable by me i am presently getting myself examined at pgi chandigarh and i am on ethanol ethanol 50 mg and uh atorvastatin 20 mg both od please advise if any center of excellence <coughs> sorry sorry please advise if any center of excellence is there in india and also advise how risky is the surgery and what is the mortality rate 
Okay, so let me tell you what HOCM is so that our other uh, our listeners could could uh, could understand what HOCM is. HOCM means hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. That means your heart has become big. So you will find this in a lot of individuals having blood pressure, having heart beat. But this is a different condition. It is it might it might be genetic or congenital. In this that case, your heart becomes big. But it's not only big, but it also causes obstruction to the outflow of the heart. So what happens is there is a resistance to the blood flow out of the heart because the heart has become so big. And because of that, you get you get symptoms like breathlessness or chest pain. And uh, uh, the way to go about it is taking atenol also. You can also maximize the medical management in terms of heart rate. If the heart, you can go from the 50 atenol dose is quite low for HOCM unless your heart rate is, is, is below 50. So you could go higher up on the atenolol dose and that could help you in decreasing your symptoms even further. Now the question is, uh, which are the same? And there are newer drugs which are coming in. There, there, is, there is a new drug which is coming, which is there in the US. It is going to get uh, uh, any time a US FDA approval. Uh, we might find it that within a few months, it might also come to India. So, so that's one hope as well. Uh, but in India, there are centers like Jaydeva. In Jaydeva, there's a, cent uh, there's a center in Bangalore as well as Nara and Rudale, these are the centers which are doing myomectomy, but the numbers are not as big as those are there in the US. So Mayo is one big center for, for myomectomy. There are certain centers in Germany as well who do surgical myomectomies on a regular basis. So if I, I mean, if he's interested, I could share my number and we could get in touch and I could, I could help him out. Yeah, thank you very much. We will, uh, we will, we will take it and, you know, we will also put it up in the, in the, uh, uh, takeaways that we carry on uh, uh, Monday. Uh, Brigadier Kalia has asked, uh, Doctor, can you once again repeat the cholesterol levels for a person who is 75? So I, uh, what I, what I, uh, what I said was uh, 50 LDL cholesterol for somebody who's already had a heart disease. So those, for a person who's had an angioplasty, you need to keep the LDL cholesterol of 50, 50 or less than 50. And for someone who's a diabetic, you so diabetes is one different subset. So in diabetic, uh, what what usually happens is we keep on focusing on the on the cholesterol on the sugar, but cholesterol is like a step brother. We don't check the cholesterol at all. But all the problems of diabetes are because of high sugar and cholesterol. So you have the blockages in the heart or the kidney getting damaged. So you also need to check your cholesterol. So every diabetic has to has to check his cholesterol. And in a diabetic. The cholesterol, LDL cholesterol should be less than 70. Right. So 50 for heart disease, 70 for uh, for a diabetic patient. Right. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Shrikant Kulkarni. Uh, is, um, uh, can recalcification be reversed? If so, how? Okay. So what he's asking essentially is, uh, what happens is when you get blockages or when you get degeneration, is calcium gets deposited. So you would find you doing a CT angio or you doing an echo and, and doctors writing the severe calcification or moderate calcification present. So let me tell you, people have this misconception that they're, because they're taking calcium tablets, they're getting more calcium. So that's not the, that's not the thing. What happens is when your body tissues degenerate, they take along salts along uh, with it. So calcium gets deposited as a part of degeneration. So it's a marker of degeneration. So that's one thing. Secondly, you in, in coronary artery disease, when you have blockages, you can get a lot of calcium in your coronary arteries. So what you can do is, there are studies to prove when you give statins, hydrostatins, that is cholesterol-lowering medicines, these blockages or this calcification can be arrested. Now, whether they can be reversed is, is a question uh, uh, is a question we wouldn't be able to answer for, uh, completely. But yes, they could be arrested and they could be kept under control. So calcification in coronary arteries can be arrested. Right, thank you. We have a question from an anonymous attendee who's age 68. And uh, she has asked, uh, I would like to know what is cardiomegaly? I need to get a surgery next week for my eye. Is there any risk? Okay, cardiomegaly, as the word as the word says, cardio means heart, megaly means big. So it means a big heart. So big heart could be due to a number of reasons. So it could be maybe uh, maybe blood pressure, it could be volumeal issues, it could be you know multiple things.
But most commonly, and if, if the lady is asymptomatic, most commonly it's poorly controlled blood pressure. So if the blood pressure is not under control, your heart becomes weak. Now, why does this happen? So what happens is your BP, your heart has to pump against your blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is 120, 80, your heart takes minimal effort to pump. Now, same thing when the blood pressure goes to 150, 60, 170, 200, the heart has to generate that kind of force to get the blood ejected out from your system against the BP. So what happens is there's a physiological hypertrophy that the heart becomes big. And because it becomes big, it's just like going to the gym and lifting weights, your muscles get developed. The same way the blood pressure, your, your, your heart becomes big to compensate for the force. And because of that, what happens is the heart becomes big, it, it ejects the blood, but it becomes more stiff as well. It's like Salman Khan walking with all the muscles. He's all stiff. He cannot dance well, right? So because the heart becomes stiff, it, the, what happens is it doesn't receive the blood well from the lungs and therefore you feel breathless. So this is the problem with big hearts and especially in patients who are hypertensive, who are poorly controlled hypertensive or poorly controlled blood pressure. Now she's asking whether it's a risk. I think if she's got a cardiomegaly, she should first get an ECG done and a 2D echo done and a consultation with a physician or a cardiologist and then take it forward because if it's an eye surgery, it's not an emergent surgery, maybe. It can, first, let, let, let's get the heart evaluated and then, then she could go for the search. Doctor, there are a couple of people who have asked for your coordinates, your number and your uh, email address. Would you be able to share that just now or uh, so we can, you know? Should I, should I tell you right now? Yes, please. Uh, and I'll also put it up on the so chat. My contact, my contact number is 98203. One second, sir. One second. 98203. 84743. 84743. And my email ID would be Dr. Ankur MD. That is D R A N K U R M D at gmail.com. Great. Thank you. So, Doctor, uh, just on a lighter note, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people say Bade Dilwala hai, you know. <laughs> so obviously that's that's medically not a not the right thing to say. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, uh, you know, it was just getting too serious and too <laughs> I think I had to practice joke. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, there's another person who said, uh, uh, you know, there's an anonymous attendee who's sent a lot of questions. Uh, uh, if you can send it as one question, it'll be great. But I'll, in the meantime, take something else. So there's a question by Somnath Gupta, who says, my wife, age 33, Heart is weak as per diagnosis and found HDL 42 and LDL 67. She is diabetic since 15 years and HB1, HbA1c is 8.5. She is still using tablets for diabetes. What should be the ideal level for cholesterol? So uh, we, uh, uh, what, I, what I got from the question is the heart is weak. The diabetes HbA1c is 8.5. So I, I told you the cutoff is 7. So that means the diabetes is not in a good control. And I've not got the LDL cholesterol. Has he mentioned the LDL cholesterol? LDL is 67. 67 is pretty okay. I mean, it should be 50, but 67 is, is, is okay. So the way to go about is, is first, why is the heart weak? Okay, so essentially three causes why heart, heart goes weak. One is if there is a blockage in the heart. So the blood supply to the muscles of the heart goes down, so heart pumps less. Second is if there's no blockage, but the heart muscle by itself goes weak. So that's called as cardiomyopathy. So your, muscle, your heart muscle goes weak and therefore the pumping goes down. So there's no blockage. And the third thing is like COVID or all infiltrative diseases like infections and inflammation, they affect your heart. And because of that, the muscles get stiff and they don't pump. And that's the third reason. So blockage, muscles going weak or infiltration or infection in the heart. So these are the three reasons. What I suspect is she's a diabetic. So the most common cause of in 90% of diabetics, the pumping goes down is because of blockage. So if there's a blockage that needs to be treated first, and then you need to manage her, your diabetes better. So there are fantastic medications now available for diabetes. And many medicines which are available for diabetes are very good for the heart. If at all by maximum medical management also, or uh, by medicines also, your sugar does not come under control, then she has to be on insulin. So the end point is not how much medicines you're taking. The end point is what is your HbA1c? If your HbA1c is seven with with uh, two, two drugs, we are happy. But if it's not even with uh, six or drugs, then you have to be on an insulin. Right. Doctor, there's a question which has come in. My HbA1c is 6.2. 
and uh, sugar levels are under control, but my LDL is 127 and non-HDL is 152.9. Uh, uh, what should I be doing? So, so the, uh, so what I what I get is the patient. This person is the the, the, the listener is not a diabetic because the is the is, is the is the is the listener a diabetic? Is the question question regarding diabetes or non-diabetes? No, about the LDL count. Of the, about the LDL. So one twenty one is slightly high. So what are the four the four groups of patients? So who who requires a aggressive cholesterol control? So one is if you have a heart disease, you require aggressive cholesterol control. Second is if you have a diabetic. You require aggressive blood pressure control. The third is even even if you are none of them, but your risk is very high of of uh, of having an event. So that in that case you would uh, you would require a better cholesterol control. In this patient, the ideal cholesterol is 121, which is high, which is more than 100. But if he has a very strong family history of heart disease, and if there is he's at a very high risk of having a cardiac issue, if he's a smoker, then we would be happy to keep it less than 100. So you, he could first try your diet and exercise, and then, then if at all by by that also, if it doesn't come under control, then maybe a low dose diet. Right. Thank you. Um, uh, there is a question by the name of uh, Doctor. Uh, there's a question from Doctor uh, from Raghavendra Odiar who says, "I find during uh, I find doing regular pranayam keeps my heart health in sound condition. Do you agree with this view?" Hundred uh, percent. 100%. And what about Panchakarma? What are your views on Ayurvedic treatment? So I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in Ayurvedic treatment, so I'd be incompetent to, to tell anything. No? So I, I know only heart and that too, you know, modern medicine. So I, I wouldn't be in any position. What I tell my patients who ask me whether should I take Ayurvedic medicines, I say you don't stop my medicines. Whatever belief you have, if they are safe and your, and your, and your doctor says, they go ahead and go ahead. I have no issues with it. But don't, don't please don't stop my medicines. But I have, I seriously, I am not competent enough to, to talk about Ayurveda. But, but the regular exercises and yoga definitely helps. Biofeedback, relaxation therapies, these are part of our, our, uh, you know, rehab, the cardiac rehab we talk of. Angioplasty is just one part. Prevention is the second part, and third part is rehabilitation. So rehab, uh, yoga, exercise. Is a very essential part uh, of, of cardiac rehab. Right, thank you. We have a question from uh, Mr. Suresh Ghate, who is 69. Uh, in my case, he says there's severe aortic valve calcification and aortic uh, stenosis. There's mild AR and AO is 3.1 centimeters. The LVEF is 65%. Is uh, valve replacement necessary or with all precautions? can be reversed. I have reduced weight by 25 kilos. That is reduced from 100 to 75. It is more than one year and I'm taking precautions. What is his age? 69. 69. So uh, I, as I told in the, in the opening remarks, volvular heart disease are part of aging. Unfortunately, for we have, as we discussed, statins, you know, diabetic medications. These are reverse your blockages of the heart. But there's no good medicine, the trial after trial has shown us that there's no good medicine to reverse the volvular issues. So if you have severe aortic stenosis, and there is data now to tell if the severe aortic stenosis when treated early helps in, helps in improving the long-term outcomes. So if you are a near 70-year-old, wall replacement is one thing. And the other thing which we do, and I do uh, regularly, is transcatheter aortic wall. This is a revolutionary therapy which has come in. Uh, we've been doing it since 2017. And what Initially, in octogenarians, nonogenarians, there was only open heart surgery for the wall. There was nothing like an angioplasty for the wall. So this is like an angioplasty of the wall. So what you do is you, from the leg arteries, you take a wall crimped on the balloon, and you take it across the wall and just open the balloon from outside. When you open the balloon, the wall expands, and you get a new wall functioning without a cut in your in your chest. And believe me, I have discharged patients in 24 hours post post. Uh, this wall uh, uh, therapy, which is called a STAVI. So, if you want any information, you can go to the wallclinic.org, uh, uh, which is our website, and you could go there and you can check out uh, the videos and you know this therapy. Right. Thank you. We have a question from uh, uh, 
uh, uh, male 70 to 70 to 72. I don't know why he's given a rage, but whatever. 70 to 72 years, had a stent operation in 2018 uh, and has been told to take EcoSpin 75 all his life and Rosaville 5 in MG. Does he also have to take uh, uh, all this all his life? As I, as I told you that, uh, you know, Rosaville started in 5 is a very low dose. So, uh, what do we what do we do? Uh, how do we check post angioplasty? You check the LDL cholesterol. So again, the endpoint is not five, ten, twenty. Why a five? Why a ten? Why a twenty? Why a fourteen? An individual. It doesn't depend on the it doesn't depend on the dosage. It depends on what your LDL cholesterol is. So five is a very underdosed uh, medicine going on. Second is aspirin. You have to give one because it is put in a stent. So whenever a stent is there, you always have a small risk of the stent getting blocked because of a clot. And therefore, aspirin has to be given lifelong. The only risk with that aspirin is the theoretical risk of having a bleed. But here, whenever you do any therapy, it's always risk-benefit ratio. So here, the benefit is much, much more than the risk. So uh, it, yes, the, uh, the answer is you need to be on an aspirin all your life. And rosuastatin, I think you should consult your cardiologist and uh, check your cholesterol levels. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, you need, to, you need to titrate your dose. Right. Uh... There's another question for a, for a woman, 77, uh, Brady, Cardia, and Pacemaker. Does she take uh, Elix-6 and Roosevelt 5 mg lifelong? So uh, if there's a Pacemaker inserted, or, uh, then there is no... So the, this system is totally different. There's nothing to do with the blockage of the heart. So there is an electrical wiring system of your heart. So as you have the walls, you have the arteries of the heart. You also have the electrical wiring system. The heart is a wired system. That's why you see the ECG. The voltages which are picked up from the heart is the ECG. So what happens is when certain individuals, your pacemaker or the the uh, the main area which gives uh, uh, which gives the beats, it goes down slow. It becomes bad, and because of that, your heart rate goes down, and because of that, you might get chest pain, breathlessness, and you might have chakkar or you might fall down, have a blackout. So what we do is we put in, we do a small procedure. We just give a nick on the on the left part, uh, just under your collarbone, and put a small device, which is called as a pacemaker, two wires in your heart, which is again not opened up, it's through a small nick. And that gives you, it's a smart device. So what it does is it senses whether your beat is coming properly at 60 beats per minute. If it's not coming, it gives a current on its own. So that's called as a pacemaker. It's a very, it's a, it's a very sophisticated machine. Now, when you have a pacemaker, you, ideally, if you have a blockage, then only you require to be on a statin or if you are a diabetic, if there is an indi indication for starting statins, then you would be on it. Otherwise, if you have a pacemaker by itself, pacemaker is not an indication to start anything. So once you have done a, a pacemaker, it's that's it. There is no medicine for keeping the pacemaker ongoing. So when you have a pacemaker, you have to check your pacemaker every year because the battery lasts for 8 to 12 years. And before the battery goes off, you need to change your pacemaker. So it is very, very important that you get an ECG on time and every year you check your pacemaker to the pacemaker uh, company person, the company executive. Right. Uh, she has just sent a message that the pacemaker was inserted due to a stroke in 2015. Right, right. So, so there is no special medicine for, for the pacemaker. Yes, for the stroke, whatever the stroke was due to, if it was due to blockage, then she has to be on a statin and an aspirin. Right. Uh... Doctor, the person who's, who spoke about the pranayam, etc., uh, he says for uh, for future, uh, he has no heart problems right now, but for the future, uh, what type of food, uh, he's a vegetarian, what type of food would you recommend? Uh, uh, you know, and, and then this is for everyone in terms of vegetarian and non-vegetarian. What kind of food would you recommend and what are the kind of indulgences that you would allow so uh, what kind of food is, uh, yeah, so if you're a hypertensive, you need to go low on the salt. So your salt needs to be restricted. Uh, but what happens is some people overdo it. That That is also what I want to impress upon. Please don't overdo it. What happens is your sodiums go low and then you uh, get disoriented and then many of our, our older patients have landed up in hospital ICU because of that. So that's one thing. The second thing is, uh, if you are having a weak heart, you need to take your salt slow and also the fluid should be low. So that's very, very important. So if the pumping of your heart is less than 35%, your fluid intake has to be low. Okay. People who have a normal functioning heart, there's no fluid restriction. In fact, fluid helps. 
Now coming to the to to the to the diet. So bakery items, maida of any form. Okay, your biscuits, pav, your breads. Avoid that. Eat a green, a lot of green leafy vegetables. That helps. It has a lot of fibers, which help, which help in keeping the cholesterol in the gut and prevent the absorption in the in the in the blood. Uh, third, you need to cut down on your bread milk products. So I tell my patients, where does your ghee come from? Where does your cheese come from? It all comes from milk. So milk has to be taken in moderation. So if 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 you if what what is the alternative to that? You could go and uh, take a healthier option like a skim milk. Which has which is a low fat milk, so you could do that. Uh, we have this concept of applying ghee to all rotis. Okay, so I don't eat any cholesterol. I don't eat any fatty things. I don't eat what my patients say, but they apply a lot of ghee on their rotis. So that is one thing which you, which you should avoid. Coming to the Sham ka nashta, which is the most unhealthy of all the Indian, uh, you know, in the Indian diet, is the Sham ka nashta. Is we will we will keep ourselves healthy throughout the day. But the sham ka nashta will be samosa, will be farsan, will be chuda, will be vada. So, so you know, curtail those uh, those instincts of yours in 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 the evening time. You could you could go eat fruits, have a fruit bowl in between. Okay, you could eat nuts. So these are the healthier options which you could you could uh, you could have. And night time, have a light diet. Have a light diet. Try to eat before nine a.m. or uh, nine p.m. Helps why? Because if you eat and go off to sleep, you'll get a lot of leakage. So early in the morning, you'll get this throat irritation, acidity, what people say. You know. So eat. So whatever the Jains follow, they follow eating early. This is a very very physiological and the right method. So eat early because so that you have at least a three to four hours before you go and uh, go off to sleep. Last thing which I want to tell is avoid screen times. So what happens is in the night time. Any form of screen, whether it's your tab, it's your TV, it's your phone, don't do that. Okay. And lastly, for non-vegetarians, so avoid red meats. Don't don't have your your mutton. Avoid your mutton and all all the red meats. You can have chicken. You can have healthy fish which is baked, not fried. You can have uh, egg white. Avoid the egg yellow. Avoid prawns. Avoid shellfishes and crustaceans of any any sort. So these are the things you need to avoid. Rest you can have a sugar-free ice cream once in a while. You can have all the sugar-free options which are there around, and once in a while everything is okay. Doctor, you are your 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 hospitals are in the heart of uh, you know the oily food district, right? How do you <laughs> how do you manage to ward off all the the, the attractions? It's right, it's right. So so they're all healthy joints around, unhealthy joints around. You know, you have to keep yourself. Uh, away from that. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, we we'll take one or one one or two more questions. We have a question from uh, Mr. Kamlesh Vajpayee. He says he is um, sixty eight years old. He is having BPS BP since four four years. Uh, Fifty eight kilos. Average sugar is uh, six point seven five, and BP is around one thirty one forty by eighty. Uh, he has Telma forty in the morning, uh, Silica ten mg in the evening. What is the function of silicar? He asks. I want to know. I walk around eight kilometers for fifty-five minutes. I he Fantastic. walks around eight a.m. for fifty-five uh, minutes. No apparent problems. Fantastic! You're doing very well. Hats off. So, <laughs> so silicar is basically a BP lowering medicine. It's one of the it's, it's one of the uh, uh, you know safer medicines for blood pressure. So it does not have a lot of kidney effect. It does not require a lot of uh, potassium monitoring because what happens with tell me sartan or telma is your potassium can go up, your creatinine can shoot up. But silagar is one safe drug. You take that and you forget. So that's my favorite go-to drug when I have I have an elderly gentleman because then I need not monitor. So I need not monitor the creatinine. I need not monitor monitor the potassium. If I feel the patient is not going to come for a lot of follow-ups with me, what I do is I I safely start a silagar. A tenmi sartan is a very very good drug, an excellent blood pressure medicine, especially who have big bade hearts, the big hearts. So it regresses the cardiomegaly very fast. But the problem with tenmi sartan is not it's not like you know fire and forget. You need to monitor it. You need to take that medicine. You need, you need to monitor your creatinine, your potassium. So that requires a monitoring. What I would suggest is if he is compliant, what happens is nowadays the concept is to combine both the medicines together. 
because the compliance improves. And once the compliance improves, the blood pressure control improves. So there are options wherein you can combine Silacar and Telmisadan together and take one drug, like Silacar T. A Silacar T4010 would be having a Telmisadan and a Silacar both together. So you need not take it, you know, two times in a day. And most of these are 24 hours action. So you take once in the night, it covers for the 24 hours. Right. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Nisar Ukaboy, who's 79, non-diabetic, no high BP, non-smoker, no alcohol. My recent angiography report showed LVEF as 60% and RCA super dominant vessel with, with, the, with plaque in proximal segment. Recent HB1, uh, HbA1ac is 5.8. I have been prescribed Rose Bay A 20 and 75. I go for a 20 minute walk three to four times a week. Doctor, what would your advice be for him? He is 79. I think he's doing fantastic. I think there's just a plaque, just a small plaque in the right side. And he's taking Rosuastatin 20 mg, which is fantastic. I think he did not do anything more. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from a 71 year old. Uh, not uh, could, could you repeat? I couldn't, couldn't hear. Yeah. We have another question from a 71 year old male. He has had his aortic uh, valve replacement surgery in. 2013 in Mumbai, and he had to opt for a tissue valve. He's doing fine now, but was told that the tissue wears out over the years. Please advise on the same, his, that, that's his question, and what precautions to be taken. I'm taking the following medications, Envas 5, Prolomet XL25, Ecosprint 75, Silica 10, and Rosewest 5. So he's opted for a tissue valve, which is a very good thing. So. Uh, this, this would be the question whenever somebody undergoes a wall replacement. So there are two questions asked. Now there are three questions, but two questions asked. Which wall do you want to go for? A metallic wall or a tissue wall? So what's the advantage of a metallic wall and what's the what's the advantage of a tissue wall? Let me brief you. So metal wall, what happens is it has durability. You put the wall and it works for 20, 25 years. But the problem is you have to take blood thinners and heavy dose blood thinners. You need to keep your blood 2.5 to 3 times thinner than what is general population. So that becomes a risk when you age. You have the chance of increased bleeding risk. So what people do is they opt for a tissue wall, which is safe. You don't have to, you have to take thinners, but there's do, it's an aspirin suffices. You don't have to take a warfarin or you know heavy dose thinners. But what happens is it doesn't have durability or longevity. It can give you 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. But then the tissue wall wears out. What you need to do is you need to do your echoes on time. You need to do echoes every six monthly now because 2013, it's almost 10 years. So six monthly 2D echo to see the functioning of the wall, whether there is any leakage developing or not, whether there's any stenosis. And nowadays there are fantastic, uh, I told you Tavi is what we do, transcatheter aortic wall. So I have a patient right now admitted in Wokhar Hospital, wherein uh, she's an 84 year old lady who's undergone a tissue wall. And now she's already an open heart surgery was done. She's 83, she cannot do a redo. That is, you cannot open up the heart again. So I'm going to perform this procedure now. I'm going to put a valve inside a valve, and that will uh, that, that that will take care of the the degenerative changes which happen in the valve. So TAVI is the therapy. If at all you require, unfold, uh, by by God's grace, you should not require it. But if you require it, then TAVI is the therapy to go about. You can put a valve inside a valve without opening the heart. Doctor, we are nearing our our end time, but I'll just keep two questions. One is. Uh, Zaina Masadawala asks, what does RBB in bundle mean in a cardiograph? Okay, so RBBB means right bundle branch block. It has nothing to do with your blockages of the heart. The office might be present, may not be present. That is, it does not tell you anything. 4% of regular individuals will have RBBB on the ECG. What it means is there is, there is this bundle, which the pacemaker, which I told you, the pacemaker has, the heart is a wired system. So the wire from the pacemaker, which is the, the upper chamber of the heart comes down and then branches into the right bundle and the left bundle. So these are the electrical wires. This is nothing to do with the blockages. So some individuals don't have this right bundle. And because they don't have this right bundle, there's a particular pattern which is seen in the ECG and that's called as a right bundle branch block. What people confuse is an RBBB means there is a blockage in the heart. It's not the blockage in the heart, but it's a blockage in the wiring system of the heart. So that ECG pattern is there, which can be normally seen in 4%. So if you just have an RBBB, you are asymptomatic, uh, you have good cholesterols and sugars, it could be normal. It could be normal for you. 
and one more thing i want to impress upon before i leave uh, it is very very important is keep your medical records very very well so rbbb i see a lot of issues with rbbb and then they have some pain here and there and which i know maybe this rbbb is normal for all but there are certain people who have done an ecg before and if i get an ecg done before and i compare both the ecgs together i see are this patient had rbbb 10 years back the patient has lived for 10 more years this rbbb is normal for this patient so this is very important to keep your medical because what people do is they throw their medical reports out ho gaya diwali ki saf saaf safai ho gayi christmas ki saaf safai ho gayi bahar nikal diya no so gold mine it's so much of information for the doctor you are helping us and what we nowadays do is what i ask my patient is take snapshot of all the reports and don't keep it on your phone make a folder in google drive upload everything on google drive so if you lose your phone if you go out on a party or a holiday outside and you don't have medical records you have it on your phone you have it on your drive so medical record keeping is very very important right thank you we have one last question which is a, a very broad based question is that what are the kind of things that you need to do for uh, keeping your heart uh, uh, valves healthy this is uh, zarin shof us uh, i unfortunately i could tell you everything i could tell you you know do this do that but unfortunately nothing has has helped but yes what helps is what i feel this is not science but what i feel and this is from experience this is not any study it's good food fresh air you know this is for all so eat good food have fresh air exercise regularly all these things will keep you healthy will will help you live longer so also you know what what people do is is uh, is they don't have a regular exercise routine you know lot of patients they just skip what the acc tells you by recommendation to keep a good physical health do 120 minutes of exercise just 120 minutes of exercising in a week suffice 120 minutes is just 2 hours of exercise so just do 2 hours of exercising in a week's time it could be any which ways and it will it will take care of your health you might not lose weight mind you but it will keep a good physical health so exercise regularly also some amount of weight training also helps so some amount of weight training it is not 50 kilos maybe 2 kilos maybe 3 kilos for such some people who are not the 70 plus but 60 odd helps you keep your toned muscle stone and keeps what happens in the basal state also also the muscles consume your your cholesterol they consume your sugars and that keeps you healthy so basic small small weights keep yourself active eat good food these are all the things which are which are good for for a healthy heart but unfortunately if you ask me specifics like i give you specifics for blood pressure low salt i give you specifics for a weak heart that is low salt low water i give you specifics for 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 you know for keeping your blockages out there is no specific for keeping your your walls uh, you know normal thank you doctor for uh, for for you're know, taking so many questions that we've been able to uh, uh, address today and uh, answering all of them you know so in such a detailed manner uh, thank you very much once again for your time today and uh, we'd love to have you once again uh, one other things i hope our, our people don't have to come to you for uh, for help <laughs> for but please no, come to me to me i know me. i know you are always available <laughs> and we have given your uh, number and your email address um, uh, for for all of you here thank you for being here and uh, uh, as always we will have the edited uh, extracts from uh, 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 edited video as well as the takeaways from this written by a, a qualified doctor and uh, these will be up on uh, seniorstoday.in on monday we will be back once again next week next saturday on uh, 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 for our next session of uh, health live at seniors today our, uh, our our next issue of uh, seniors today is going to be out on the 15th we have uh, you know as you are aware uh, uh, the great singer lata mangeshkar passed away last sunday and uh, the the first issue the very first issue of seniors today had an interview with lata mangeshkar and it was perhaps her last extensive interview that she, that she had conducted so uh, that she had given and we have uh, so we have a story around that and we have a special uh, tribute written by uh, mr harsh goenka uh, to uh, lata mangeshkar and uh, because you know the uh, uh, the family knew knew her fairly well 
and uh, uh, yeah that's about it i'm i'm looking forward to 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 the issue which will be out on the 15 there's a fair amount of interesting stuff that is there there is uh, this article so we have harsh goenka writing on lata mangeshkar there's urvi piramal writing on uh, uh, on on badami uh, 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 caves that i that exist in karnataka uh, there's an article by uh, by vandana kanoria on mehendi there is something on jetro tal if you are interested in jetro tal, tal tal music so a lot of it is there and uh, uh, so look forward to it it's there it will be there on senior today dot in on uh, on uh, on on the 15 that is tuesday so with all our love it's valentines day coming up on uh, on uh, on monday february 14 so uh, all the best for you and let's meet once again next uh, saturday at 5 pm thank you once again dr ankur i think i have to look at you like this but <laughs> uh, right thank you thank you very much dr ankur thank you you are on mute you are on mute thank you very much thank you it was it was nice being here and i hope to come back again to take yeah. your questions next time thank you once thank you thank you bye